Hello and welcome to the Excite Masterclass. And on this episode of Garage Talk, we try to unravel a secret of the automotive world, engine tuning. So, what is engine tuning? Well, in its most simplest form, it means tuning or adjusting the amount of fuel and air mixing inside an internal combustion engine and having them explode or combust in its most efficient way possible. Now, what that means is that neither fuel nor air is in excess of one another and the waste is at an absolute minimum. Now, all cars come from the factory with some kind of tune. So, why is it necessary to retune an engine? Well, there's a number of reasons. Firstly, over time, certain components within an engine can wear down. And if you want to get the same kind of fuel economy and performance, you might need to make some adjustments to compensate for these differences. Another reason why you would need to retune is in case you had to rebuild your engine and change the pistons with a bigger one or a different camshaft, or maybe even add a turbocharger, because you know how we love to add turbochargers. In that situation, you would definitely need to retune your engine to compensate for the extra power so that you can run it safely and reliably. There's another reason as well, because sometimes when you get performance cars, they're tuned to a higher standard of fuel, a different type of fuel quality that num normally you wouldn't find in Sri Lanka. What that means is you might want to detune these cars just a little bit so that they run consistently on our local petrol. All right, Sam, I think we've kind of covered why we need to tune or retune vehicles. I think now what we need to go and do is see how it's done. So basically, back in the day, before my time, this was what was used to tune a car's engine. It is called a carb or carburetor. Basically, it's very simple. It has a couple of doors here at the back, which open to let the air in. And inside this, there are a couple of jets which control the delivery of fuel. It's all mechanical and it's all manual. Now, while the carburetor worked well and truly, perfectly fine, and you were able to tune a car to deliver loads of power and fairly economically, what it didn't have was versatility and efficiency. For example, say you tune your car in Colombo at sea level and it would work well. But once you drive up to, say, Nuorelia, which is much higher in altitude where the air is thinner and less oxygen, the car would run horribly rich. So which case, you have to dismantle the carburetor, change the jets inside, which is obviously a massive troublesome problem, and then you'd have to fit it back all again. So once electronic fuel injection or EFI was introduced in the 1950s, the carburetor was pretty much done and dusted. That's right, because with fuel injection, or more importantly, electronic fuel injection, all of a sudden, the art of tuning a car was revolutionized. It brought computers into the mix, and this meant a revolution for car tuning. Because the external parameters that would have afflicted the mechanical adjustment of a carburetor could all be done electronically via a computer with electronic fuel injection. But what this also meant was that tuning became less of a mechanical science and more of an electronic and computer-based science. And to find out exactly what that means and how you can tune a modern car, we've got some help lined up to guide us through the process. So to help us navigate through this maze of tuning a modern-day performance car, we've brought through our very own wizard, Sabri Salam from Lab57 to help guide us through this. Sabri, welcome to Garage Talk. Hi, thanks, welcome. All right, Sabri, I noticed that this garage has a dyno or dynamo meter in the middle of it. Can you just explain a little bit about it, what it is and why we need it to tune a car or an engine? The most simplest terms, it's a treadmill for cars. Okay, all right, treadmill for cars, I like that one. <laughs> so, with it we use, uh, we can not only tune cars, we can use it for diagnosis of uh, problems um, and we get a lot of data from it. So, basically we are able to use that data for us to tune, for us to diagnose and do multiple other things. All right, also regarding the dyno, uh, what are the readings that it will give you that you need uh, to kind of tune a vehicle? So there are multiple readings. Uh, you can get pretty much anything that's coming out of the car. Uh, but what we use for performance tuning is uh, usually AFR, 
Uh, so we can have that come up on the line. Just what F is AFR? AFR, AFR again? is air fuel ratio. Air fuel so ratio. So this okay, is uh, so just to see that it's combusting in, in equal terms or whatever. Exactly. So okay. that is uh, how fuel efficient the car is, also for emissions, various things uh, which is affected by AFR. Also, you get the horsepower and torque figures. Those are the main two numbers that we are looking for on the dyno. All right, brilliant, Sabri. Uh, Sam, I think we need to head over to a dyno, put a vehicle on it, and check out these AFR and horsepower numbers. Sounds good. Sabri, after you. Sure, let's go. All right, so here we have it. We've got a beautiful black John Cooper Works Mini strapped onto the dyno, the treadmill for cars. And we've got all the sensors hooked up to this dynamo meter. And you can see the screens are blank at the moment, but in a short while, Sabri is going to give us just a teaser of what this dyno can do. He's going to do one run. And then before we do any tuning, we're kind of going trying to analyze what the readings the dyno give us and try and explain that to you. All right, Sabri, go ahead. You can do, give us a run on the dyno now. Let's go. So as you can see, the dyno or the rolling road is very much like a treadmill for cars. It monitors two key numbers, power and torque. But on a rolling road, you can monitor these throughout the rev range at various speeds as well. So it gives you an accurate picture of what you're going to be experiencing on the open road. Now the probe that's inserted in the exhaust monitors the air-fuel ratio, which is basically the mixture of air and fuel. Too much fuel and it's running rich. Too much air and it's running lean. Now this is typically something that could have been adjusted with mixture screws in carburetors, but with ECUs, which are basically the brains of a computer in a modern car, that is what needs to be adjusted on the computer. And by doing it on the fly on a dyno, means that you can do it again throughout the rev range under different load conditions as well. All right, Sabri, uh, so we've done the run and I see a whole lot of lines here. Uh, can we just go one by one and kind of explain? We'll start off here. Yeah. What, is, what is this line and what does it kind of show? Here we have the wheel horsepower. Okay. Right. Uh, we have RPM and speed on the bottom here. Okay. Uh, so this was run in third gear. We ran from 45 kilometers power up to 130. Okay. And so that was from 2300 to 7000 RPM. Okay. So now I know you said wheel horsepower yes. and it's showing 133.9. Yeah. Okay. When this car comes out from the factory, Mini will tell you they've got about it's got about 260, 280 horsepower yeah. or 240. So, yeah. so how does this number? How do we kind of relate this number to that number? Right. So when we say when we talk about uh, wheel horsepower, what it means is the horsepower that's actually being put onto the road after drivetrain losses and uh, the wheel losses and etc uh, etc. Et okay, alright. So, so basically this is what you're going to get on the road. Exactly. What the manufacturers tell you, they've got 240 horsepower, that is not the wheel horsepower, that is a engine, engine, horse fly wheel horse. engine horsepower rating. Okay, brilliant. Uh, and then what is this graph? Uh, so the, uh, the graph we have here on the bottom is uh, air fuel ratio. Okay, alright. So, so this is how the air and the fuel kind of mix inside the engine. Yeah. When we tune the car now, what we'd want to do is target for this line to be up closer to this, not above it, but as much as possible on the line itself. All right, now that we've got a baseline run, Sabri, I'm going to ask you to get back in the car, do your little wizardry and magic on the ECU, reflash it and get us a little more power so that we can do a, a run and see how it compared to this baseline run. So now we're going to flash the ECU on this Mini. What exactly does that mean? Well, it sounds a lot like what it actually is. We're not changing any hardware, we're just going to plug it into the Mini's ECU and change the software in it. It's a bit like upgrading a computer to run on better software. So we're going to go over to the dyno and see exactly how much performance gain we get from just a simple tune like this. All right, so Sabri has done another run on the Mini Cooper and he's reflashed the ECU and got a little bit more power. Sabri, I know that the blue line was what we ran first. Yes. Is the red line what you got now? Yes. Wow. Well, some really impressive gain. We've made a lot more power as what you can see. Okay. Right at the red line, towards the red line as well. We've shifted the peak power from about 5,000 RPM all the way up to about 6.4. Oh, brilliant. So I need to ask you now, is the red line safe? 
is it something that you can run on the road every day? Oh yes, most definitely. Okay, so so why why is there so much of a uh, difference when you can take a car that the factory has given and you put it on a dyno and give it to someone like you and they are able to make yeah. so much of power? What's so, the main component that you have had adjusted? Yeah, so these uh, these engines obviously they are calibrated by the manufacturer to go all over the world. Okay. Different types of fuels and so they they have it a bit detuned. Okay, right, okay. because they don't want to destroy the brand name, so they won't give the engine its hundred percent. So the, basically, the car comes under tuned from the factory, yeah. and we are able to maximize the performance exactly. in a safe and reliable exactly. manner. So that's a stage one flash, and while we've been doing that, Sam's got hold of a Mitsubishi Evolution, and he wants to see exactly how Sabri works his magic. So we're going to get that car on the dyno, and we're going to go in depth and see what happens behind the scenes. So that was a stage one tune, let's move on to stage two. Now the Evo we're about to show you has an aftermarket intake, exhaust and a few other bolt-on bits. But crucially, it has an aftermarket ECU. Now you might ask, why would you need to change the ECU when we could just flash the stock ECU like we did with the Mini? Well, to put it simply, your standard manufacturer ECU is kind of like a Pentium 1 processor in that it's old and antiquated and sometimes it just doesn't give you that flexibility. When you upgrade to an aftermarket ECU, it's a bit like going for an all singing and dancing Core i9. Basically, it allows you to change so many more parameters, sometimes on the fly as well, which means you can save time on the dyno as well. And with a much finer tune of those parameters, it means people like Sabri can get a much better balance of performance for your blend of performance parts that you put on an engine. But with this added complexity means that you need added expertise as well, which is why Sabri is going to show us exactly what he does when you put an aftermarket ECU over on the dyno. When we tune a road car especially, we spend about 80% of the time tuning between the idle areas up to about 4,000-5,000 RPM. Right. We spend most of our time tuning this, getting to be efficient, fuel economic, and as well as that is like get the peak torque in those areas, right? 20% of the time we work on full throttle because obviously you want to tune your car because you want to make more power. But that's easy to achieve, right? And um, so there's, there's multiple tables, so there's fuel, there's ignition, there's boost, where this car has a variable cam, uh, Mivec engine, so all of those things have to be done in the solid state uh, method first for the low end. And then once that's all done, then you can go into full throttle tuning. Right, so let's kick it up a few more notches and see what a stage 4 car looks like. So after the slightly more advanced Stage 2 tune on the Evo, we've decided to turn it up yet another notch with this Stage 4 tuned STI-12. Now I've seen some Subaru engines in my time, but this one looks completely different. For starters, the intercooler is missing, it's fitted somewhere else. The turbo is faced at a different angle and there's pipe work like a maze here. Sabri, can you just run us through some of the upgrades done on this Subaru STI-12 and what kind of numbers it had and what kind of numbers we're hoping to see once you tune it now. In stock form, these STI-12s with our fuel make roughly between 220 to 230 wheel horsepower. Okay. Right? So some of the mods that we've done on this, the most basic mod I would say is the air to oil separator. We've got a Garrett G25 660 uh, turbo in it. It's a revolutionary turbo. We've also got a Weber front mount intercooler kit with also a Garrett core. We're still running on a stock engine, stock internals. The engine block, head and block is a completely standard and basically what we are going to get now, what power we are hoping to get now is by what we call bolt-on modifications only. Yeah, I think there's not much more for us to say. Yeah, we're going to leave Sabri to get on with his job and I'm just curious to find out what kind of numbers we're going to see from this. I think we better strap this down really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> alright Sabri. Alright, so we've done the power runs on the STI-12 and Sabri's tuned it and I'm really curious to see what kind of power we've made. 
Uh, Sabri, can you just run me through the graph that we have here on the screen? Yeah, so here we have the horse wheel horsepower. This is after tuning, so we've made uh, two, 374. So this is over 100 and, uh, 130 horsepower. So just by these bolt-on mods and tuning the car, we've gone from 230 to 370 horsepower. Yeah. Wow, that is, that is absolutely fantastic to consider the fact that it's still running a stock engine. Uh, is this the kind of power that you were expecting for the modifications done uh, on the car? To be honest, I was looking at around 350, so now we've got a little bit more. Always happy to get a little. All right, now oh, that's 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 fantastic, uh, Sam. What do you think about that uh, that power curve? That looks that looks terrific. The power curve looks looks terrific, but there is something I see down here. Is there a slight drop in? Is that torque? So now what you're looking at is the torque, right? Okay. Um, you're quite right on that. So now obviously to make more power, we had to go with a bigger turbo. So okay. Ishak, you were you were telling me earlier the Subaru turbo is a 46 millimeter. Okay. And this is a 48 millimeter turbo. All so right. we've made a little jump uh, and made substantial gain up top, which you can see both on the yeah. torque and this thing. But as Sam quite rightly point, pointed out, we have lost a bit of talk on the bottom end. I just want to know what's this RPM point here, yeah. Sabri. Where so is that? That is. we go on that, that's roughly 4,000 RPM. All you have to do, Sam, is keep the revs above 4,000 RPM, RPM and then you're, yeah. you're, happy, you're a happy guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sabri, thank you so much. I just want to thank you guys at Lab 57, Ashan, you, and our whole crew for allowing us to come in, bring these cars, put them on the dyno, and kind of run through the whole program of how a car is tuned, the wizardry that goes behind the ECU, and how we actually can verify the gains on a dynometer, which is very important. It's not like you just run on the road and, and you say, oh, the car is going now, but you know, you, you can theoretically see it for yourself. Uh, it's been brilliant. Sam, what do you say? Yes, thanks so much, Sabri, and of course, everyone here at Lap 57 for giving us the day. I know I've learned a lot. I hope you have at home as well. Thanks again for watching this episode of Excite Masterclass Garage Talk. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. In fact, why don't you go ahead and leave a comment and let us know which stage of tune you would like done on your car. That's it from everyone here. Join us again for more thrills, spills, and action, and more automotive-related content. Thank you.